We made it. <sighs> we made it, Nicole. Barely. We Where are here. I don't even know what's going what on. What are you doing over there? Uh, just trying to... Did, did I close Google? I don't know. Okay, I don't on. know what's going on. Let Today me, is a weird day. Let me fix Nicole's situation here. I had it all up. Don't and know where it went. made it all go away. Oh, it's Firefox. You're a Firefox. Whoop! We made it. <laughs> I don't want to watch myself. <laughs> all right. The professionalism <sighs> never gets better than this. Whose well, idea was this? <laughs> oh, no, no, not mine. What's happening, everybody? Uh, we're going to do a little live show for you here. Uh, my name's Mark. And I'm Nicole. And we're from The Wood Whisperer. The Wood Whisperer. And we try to do this occasional live show. Yes. Without promising anything. Don't call it a comeback. <laughs> yeah, we're not. We're, no one's promised anything here. It just seems to keep happening. Yeah. But it may not. You just never know. Uh, but we are glad to be here with you guys. So thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, so we're going to get started here today. If you're if you're new to this format, uh, th this is my wife. Uh, she's also my business partner, mm -hmm. and we like to occasionally do these live shows to answer questions, connect with the community, make some announcements, just talk about what's going on. Commiserate. Today was a commiserate weird day. a little bit. I just found a, a nail in my tire. Yep, we're gonna have to take care of that as soon as we're done here. I was like, why is why is it saying it's low? Oh, I was thinking, oh, you know, the weather yeah. change got colder. Jason went out and goes. Or it could be the nail. The giant nail the in giant your tire. giant nail in your tire. So let's get that fixed ASAP. All right. All right, so we've got some questions here uh, pre-selected. So if you're a supporter of ours on either Patreon or YouTube, um, you have an opportunity to give us a question ahead of time, which mm -hmm. goes right into the show. And if you are here live, you also have an opportunity to get your question on the show just using the chat room on YouTube. Uh, Nicole will grab those questions Why as we go. I don't see the chat. No, oh, shnikes. Hey, move your little fingers. See that little thing? Ah, oh, there it is. There it is. All right. All right. A couple of announcements real quick. If you like workbenches, come here. Let me I tell you something. I love workbenches. Got a secret. They're on sale. Woo! That's it. That's the big news. We had a guild member finish uh, the Rubo. Yeah. And I was like, ooh. That inspired the sale. Let's put it on sale. So we have two great workbench courses in the Wood Whisperer Guild. One is the newer hybrid workbench, and the other is that classic split top Rubo. Both are fantastic. The hybrid bench is a little bit more, I would say budget friendly. It's a little bit smaller, uses less wood, uses less expensive hardware. Uh, the split top Rubo is the Ferrari workbench. It's the top of the line. It's uh, gonna make you go real fast. Is that what you went to uh, Ar Ar Armana? Armana. Ar Armana, mm -hmm. is that where? That's what we got from, yeah. well, yeah, so uh, uh, what do you call it? Cedar Rapids and that Amana area mm -hmm. is where Benchcraft it is. Uh, so that's where the second bench came from. Mm -hmm. uh, but my gosh, great benches, guys. If you are frustrated with uh, your current bench or maybe frustrated with the plans you got from somewhere else, um, the Guild, uh, not to toot my own horn, but I'm going to do it. Toot. I think the Guild is some of the best instructional content you're ever going to find out there uh, on the web. So check it out at thewoodwhisperguild.com. Both of those benches are on sale. No coupon code needed. The discount's yep, already there. It's already there, step by step. I want to thank baby. a wiener. Let's talk, let's talk about the wieners, Nicole. I did double check. I'm sure he uh, has I, heard that. He's never heard these jokes before. <laughs> these are all new to him. Uh, I talked to Scott. I did confirm because yes. I said I don't want to be an idiot, but I do want to confirm you actually do pronounce your name Wiener yeah. and not Weiner or Wainer yeah. or something different, but it is Wiener. Oh, and he sent you this sweet, yeah. sweet shirt. Yeah, so I got shirt. a sweet shirt. Sweet patches, which I think I left at home. Yeah, those are at home. Uh, if you want to check out Scott's work, he makes great videos at The Crafty Wiener. And we'll put a link in our notes for you. Uh, but if you search for that on YouTube, you're going to find it. Uh, the latest video is actually a really great uh, tabletop build. They basically built these coffee bean tables. So coffee beans in resin oh. uh, for a, I believe it's like a food truck, but a, a coffee truck uh, that is a charity connected to uh, victims of overdosing or people who are... Um, uh, recovering addicts. Oh, there it is. It's the first. I type in the crafty wiener there you on go. YouTube, and it's the first video. It's called Incredible Coffee Bean Countertop that we built for a good cause. So there you um, go. So it's it's a it's a fun build to watch. Very well filmed, and uh, it's just a good watch. So go check that out. So thank you, yeah, thank Scott, you, Scott. Really for sending it. us the goodies. Yeah, I, I'm I just I'm, sure. I'm fighting every instinct to make all the wiener jokes. Because I know how insulting that is to a person who has that name, and it's hard. How, how so, tiring it must so, be. So, uh, with you know my last name, yeah. my maiden name, Pitts, mm -hmm. I got I heard all of the jokes. I tell you, having Wiener as the last name is just the Pitts, Nicole. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so normally we thank patrons, and yeah. I failed to do that. Oh, we have. 
love. We haven't we, done that in a while, have we? We're so out of practice. <laughs> We're going to have to get back into practice. Uh, we got out of the habit of like every every show, we would thank everybody yep. who helped us out um, and joined on either Patreon or YouTube. And mm -hmm. uh, I screwed up. So I'm going to get you guys soon. But let's get to the meat and the potatoes. Okay. Don't do that. You don't want to do I don't, this? I'm not in the mood <laughs> to do this. All he the forgot. More reason. So it was a whole thing. He forgot the laptop back at the house. So I had to run back to the house mm -hmm. to get the lap. This whole new flow is still, we're still working it we're out. Working out we're the working kinks. out the kinks. I don't feel like doing any kind of pronunciation. Can we just do one? No, that you make fun of me. No, just one. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in the mood. Just one. I'm not in the mood. We're, there, there was, it was going to be a new segment called pronunciations with Nicole. Uh, no. Just one. Ready? No. Rural. Say I'm rural. Not, rural. Okay. You guys see how fun this would be. No. <laughs> Okay, we won't do it. We'll do it we next time. We got a super chat. We got a nice super chat. <laughs> we'll do it next time, okay? Yeah, yeah. We got it's a nice super chat from OJ. OJ. Thank you, OJ. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming back forever and never stopping ever. Pretty sure we never said that. But I like your enthusiasm. <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> Let's get to a question. This one is from Jeff Barry. <clears throat> he says, what is the difference between a coping saw and a fret saw? They look similar, uh, or at least they do to me. I wish I would have thought ahead and I would have gotten them off the wall because I have one of each. So coping saw is going to be the larger format of a saw and the, uh, the fret saw is going to be quite a bit smaller. Um, now you can find coping saws in a couple different sizes. So the one I have is about yay big. You have basically this U-shaped frame with a handle on one end and a very thin skinny blade. Um, these come in handy for cutting, you know, really tight areas and curves. We typically use them to clean out the waste between dovetails uh, and between your pins and your tails so you can get right down to that baseline. Uh, now, if you want to do something really, really detailed, maybe you're doing super fine dovetails. Maybe you're doing some kind of uh, hand cut marquetry work or inlays. You might want an even finer cut and a finer blade. That's where the fret saw comes in. Um, so the fret saw is for more detailed work. Now, that said, if you have a coping saw, if you can find a blade that fits your saw that has a really high tooth count and a very uh, small size, just a very, you know, they get really, really tiny. Think of um, like scroll saw blades. Like that, that's the kind of thing that goes on a fret saw and on a coping saw. Um, but ultimately, the larger size range is on the coping saw, the smaller on the fret. I use the coping saw most of the time. The fret saw, I have it in case I need it for something real detailed, but I don't use it as much. So I think it, without knowing what you build and what you're going to do with it, I would vote for the coping saw if you're not sure which one to get. Wolfman says, try, try not to fret about coping. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Alex Adams. He says, looking for recommendations for portable, tabletop, table saw, and band saws or add-ons with superior dust collection since my eyes are super sensitive to dust. My shop is about 10 by 20 in the basement with only 120 volts and getting anything large down there is difficult. So I don't have an answer for you, Alex. To my knowledge, most of the smaller format, both band saws and table saws that I've worked with don't have great dust collection. Um, you know, it's usually a job site saw. They're not typically that worried about dust collection on those tools. So it's a hard thing to come by. You can also look, especially if you get a very popular model of saw, there's a real good chance you're going to find videos or articles about people who have modified it for better dust collection. So that's why I, I recommend you go with something like maybe one of the DeWalt job site saws. Great reputation, nice powerful saw for, for its size. You might find, you have, have a better shot of finding someone who's done a dust collection mod on that than if you go for some brand that, you know, uh, there's just not that many out there, right? So that's going to be my recommendation. But of course, we're going to lean on the chat probably a couple times today. If you guys have recommendations for something that fits Alex's needs, good dust collection, small portable format, bandsaw, table saw, uh, throw that into the chat and we can give that information to Alex. Darb wants to know if we miss Colorado at all. Guessing the new space has to be nice for the additional area. Yes, we miss, I miss Colorado. Yeah, this is uh, what, I, what I want people to understand because I've had a lot of people ask this question like, oh, you miss this, don't you? And it's like, yeah, I do. I do. Uh, this was not like the move from Arizona where I was like, feet don't fail me now. <laughs> Get me the <to> heck <laughs> out of here. I, I still to this day have zero regrets moving away from Arizona. It just wasn't for me. Um, and I loved Colorado. We did not move here to better our weather situation. Weather. <laughs> uh, the weather is... Just know. in general, the vibe in that area in Colorado was for us, at least for me. I don't want to speak for you. Um, but I, I was, like the vibe here, too. I, the vibe here is okay, but yeah. you grew up with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is super foreign to me. Uh, I really liked it, you know, and uh, it's a little bit tougher to swallow. You're in here. the rural area. We're in the rural area. Rural. You know how it is in rural areas. 
I mean, I used to have a five minute drive. Oh yeah. To get to anything. Anything. The gym, like if I wanted to slip in a quick workout after work, I'd be able to do that and I'd be home within a reasonable it's an time. Adjustment. It's an adjustment. If I want to get to a gym now, it's uh, 20, 25 minutes away from home. Um, so yeah, there's an adjustment there. Absolutely miss Colorado and still love Colorado. But that said, we're seeing family more than we ever, ever have. have. Our kids are playing with their cousins. We're now part yeah. of things going on yeah. around here and what we're doing here, Jason and I and Nicole in this space. Feel, is next level stuff I for us. I feel like we're, we have the potential to make a really big impact. Mm -hmm. um, a bigger impact yeah, than we a bigger have, certainly. Impact. Just because we have the space to do it. Yeah. We're, we're able to look at things like, hey, maybe we want to sell wood yeah. at this location. Maybe we do want to teach classes. Yeah. Uh, Nicole and I are collaborating on some other projects so uh, together, fun. incorporating things like laser, 3D printing, um, and woodworking in the same project. Oh, speaking of lasers, <laughs> would you give me that? I, I meant to, to thank Susie. She sent me, Susie, uh, my laser pro, sent me a really awesome mm. TWW She's the one that Tumblr. made a uh, video for you. Yes, yeah, so cool. Susie at Quentin's Craft House. I need it. I'm pretty sure she has YouTube. But uh, I wanted to say thank you, Susie. Who that doesn't, was, Nicole? That was so sweet. We all do. So I'll make sure to put a link to her lasering yeah. in our show notes. Okay, next pronunciation. Yes. Nuclear. No. I'm not gonna Val do Kilmer. I'm not gonna do it. You guys, it's gonna be awesome when we do that. Trust me. I just. <laughs> I know you're not in the mood. I'm not in the mood. You got a flat tire to fix. Mm -hmm. Jesus Rodriguez wrote in and said, "I'm building a new workbench soon, and for the top, I don't know whether to use hardwood, more durable, or soft wood, which I hear is less rigid and absorbs better blows when you use a mallet. For example, what do you prefer? I prefer the harder side of things." I think it's fine. Like there are people who use softer species for their workbenches. Wilbur Pan, he has a Douglas fir workbench, right? I don't understand it. I wouldn't like it. He loves it, right? So I'm just one person with one opinion. So for me, I like a more durable, harder wearing surface, but some people really do like something that has a little bit of give to it. Um, and it's gonna depend on personal preference. I just don't want something that gets very easily dented and scratched. I believe a workbench is to be used. It's probably gonna look like crap if you're using it properly, no matter what you do. But I do find that the softer the species is, the more it's likely to look like duty in short order because it's just soft. It's gonna get banged up a lot easier. So personal preference, look around, ask around. You might find you're on the other side of things and you want that softer workbench. I uh, put a link, it, Susie has an Etsy store of everything. Look at all that laser. Look at all that laser. She lasered a baby. <laughs> How did she do that? The graduation cap, Oh, I that think. baby graduated? <laughs> what, did it graduate from the placenta? <laughs> Was that a placental graduation? It's a baby. <laughs> what the heck happened? I don't know. <laughs> it's cute though. <laughs> you guys gotta go check it There's out. It's, story. it's a baby with a graduation cap. There's probably a story behind it. <laughs> sure. Any, okay, this is from Alex Adams. Alex. Who did a twofer today. Don't think I didn't notice, Alex. Uh, he says, any recommendations for anti-vibration gloves when sanding? This has been asked a couple times, mm -hmm. and I, I won't say I poo-pooed it, but I sort of dismissed it. Um, but I also have a really high-end sander, mm -hmm. and the, the better quality sanders don't vibrate as much. I also don't have a job that requires me to sand for hours on end like Jason's doing outside right now. Mm -hmm. And if you do have one of two things, a job that requires you to do a lot of sanding, or you've got a, um, you know, just a different sander that maybe it vibrates more. That actually can be really bad for mm -hmm. like the um, repetitive stress injuries, carpal tunnel, things like that. So I totally understand and I'm on board with this concept to yeah. have one of these things. I don't have any, but I can definitely make a recommendation based on reviews. This is an Amazon um, product. Nicole's gonna put the link in the chat. I think I might try these. I wanna try them because maybe I'm missing out on something. Um, mm -hmm. When I do have a long sanding session, if I were, we're making a bunch of these spatulas, uh, which I, I was gonna announce. Bright idea, bright idea. Spags over here. We sold out of them and I didn't have a huge stock to begin with, but we sold out. I would have mentioned it today, but I didn't want you guys to get like thinking there was a product that's not available. Anyway, Jason's out there sanding you know, right now. He's got a batch of 90 spatulas that he's sanding with a random orbit sander. Uh -huh. I should probably go put some gloves on. But don't on. we have, we have a lot of gloves um, from Firm Grip. 
We have firm grip. Uh, now, so here's the thing. Any we, glove yeah. should provide some dampening of the vibration, but specifically vibration gloves, anti-vibration gloves, have pretty thick padding in there. Mm -hmm. And it's something that really just absorbs those vibrations before they ever get to your hands. So I, I Ant, think it's a good idea. Anti-vibration. So I'm going to probably order some of those at some point, and we'll test them out. I'll get back to you guys mm -hmm. and let you know. Very interesting. Yeah, nice. and firm grip gloves, you can, I think it's Home Depot you find them in. Mm -hmm. And so. they have a bunch of varieties. I think firm grip does have ones. I yeah. don't know if it's supposed to, like if it's, it's sold as anti-vibration. It's just called heavy duty. But they have some that have a thicker pad for the hand, which the thicker it is, probably the better it's going to be. Yep, there you go. All right, so that's actually all of our Patreon questions. Oh, okay. I do have YouTube supporter questions now. I, I have a, a, a super chat from, oops, I don't want to ban you. I don't want to ban you, Rich. Told you. I wish the software would fix that. I would, like, let me remove that feature. Feature. Oh, there it is. Uh, Robert Price. It's a great when you have family outside of your nuclear family nearby. <laughs> Good job, Robert. Well done, my friend. Okay. Uh, just. All right. I so, uh, Yoso wrote oh, in. Oh, before you do that. Yeah. Would be said, it looks like a Nick U graduation cap, which would totally make sense. Oh, Both of our children graduated. Having two Nick U babies. We had two. That is something worthy of putting a graduation cap mm -hmm. on a kid. It was for, a great day. Because that is a difficult thing to endure. Yes. So yeah. I, I'm almost upset that I made fun of it. <laughs> almost. It's still adorable. I have two Nick U babies myself. Yep. I feel like I've earned the privilege to make fun of it a little bit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yoso wrote in, he says, I'm using General Finishes White Poly. I'm gonna sum this up real quick just to make it a little faster. He's getting bubbles with General Finishes White Poly. It's a water-based, I think it's based on their Enduro line, uh, but it's a water-based poly with a white pigment in it. Um, never used it before. I don't have any experience with it, but he's getting bubbles. Uh, in the past, when I've gotten bubbles, sometimes it's the species I'm using. If you use an open poured wood, something like oak, uh, you can have trapped air that's actually in those pores. And as you put a layer of liquid on top of it, that air kind of wants to, to bubble out. Um, in the past, when I've done that, the most I could do to combat it is to go thinner with my coats. Um, if you go thick, it tends to be a little bit more of a problem. So that first coat, you're definitely going to want to have to like sand that back when you're done. Um, not back to bare wood, just smooth it out, get rid of the bubbles, and some of that finish is now setting down into those pores. And a couple of light coats over time, I found gets me the best results. There may be better techniques for something like this, maybe something specific to that product, um, but again, I haven't used that product very often. I mean, not at all, is what I'm saying. <laughs> so you may ask around for people who have specific experience with that to see if there's any tricks. And I've got a couple more here, unless you've got one you want to uh, no, go squeeze ahead. in. Oh, you want me to read one for you, though? William Bemis. William Bemis. I've been wood I have been working with some highly figured oak and maple boards. Up to now, I've relied on abrasives for smoothing, even going so far as to take my boards to the local hardwood dealer who has a has a Time Savers wide, wide belt sander. Is mm -hmm. that a brand? Time yep. Savers? Uh, it's a goofy name, but that never, is a brand. I've never heard of that. Uh, to help me avoid tear out from planing. Last week, I bought a vintage Stanley uh, 12 and a half veneer scraper. Both ends of the original blade are was it cambered cambered and i'm unable to achieve the smooth surfaces on my board can mm. you help with two things do you think i should square up one end of the blade put a burr on the face that will not bevel that is not beveled uh and just try again or two can you suggest a good angle for the blade the angle is very adjustable i'm just not really sure where to start yeah okay i don't have a lot of experience with the 12 and a half veneer scraper not 100% sure how it differs from like a number 80 cabinet scraper, which is what I do have experience with. So I'm going to give you advice that comes from that number 80. If this is wrong, I apologize. There might be something very specific about a veneer scraper that like a hand tool enthusiast would be able to, uh, to tell you, like um, uh, Wood by Wright or Shannon Rogers, mm -hmm. Paul Sellers, those guys. Uh, what I'm going to tell you is what works for me on the number 80. So on a number 80 cabinet scraper, it's got a pretty big, thick uh, scraper inside there. If I remember correctly, it's usually ground to about 45 degrees um, because the bevel itself is not making the cut. That's only there to facilitate easier creation of your burr. So I would grind to 45, create the burr like you would on any other scraper. It's just a little bit different because you got that angle in there. I find it actually easier when you have an angle as opposed to a square edge like on a card scraper. Um, so yeah, turn the burr on there. I don't know if there's a need to have a camber, but if this is really light duty sensitive work, you may want to 
just slightly dog ear those corners so you don't get any gouges in the corner. That's the only thing I'd worry about. But I think if you're using it to get a surface scraped nice and clean, you don't necessarily want like cambers on, on uh, what did he say it was? Cambered on both sides? Yes. Yeah, I would square it up, but you know, it really can sometimes just be as simple as nicking the corners. I don't actually want a true full camber. But this is where I'm not 100% sure. It's important to know what you don't know when it comes to tools. The camber may be there for a very specific reason. Um, just sometimes it's gonna give you the results you're looking for on something super thin, like maybe veneer or something super sensitive. So like I said, my everything I know is gonna come from a number 80 cabinet scraper. Um, but that would be my recommendation. Got a nice little message here from longtime follower. Just wanted to come on how awesome you guys are and how much you helped me improve. Thank you. Oh, well, really thank nice. you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah. Babinga bidet. Just <laughs> The word today is babinga bidet. <laughs> Look, it's Deadpool. Oh, wait a minute. Deadpool sitting on my shoulder. Yeah, there he is. Look at oh, this side. This side. <laughs> okay. Uh, the last one I, nope, last two. Gareth Jones says, my wooden frame, um, wood frame and panel front door is coming apart due to wood movement and it's 20 years old. Can I use a Pulp Fiction type syringe with PVA glue in the gaps and clamp it while in place on the door frame? Uh, should I, or should I just take it off, separate the panels, lay it flat when clamping? Uh, I do want to use a quick set glue as my house, it's my house's front entry door. So this is kind of a, it depends. I mean, if this is at the point that things are falling apart so much that you could just take this whole door apart, man, that sounds like something you want to take off the hinges, get it in the shop, uh, clean up those joints and re-glue them. Uh, whether a regular wood glue is going to work, well, wood glue doesn't really bond to itself very well. So if you think about a broken joint, let's assume glue was spread thoroughly in that joint, even when it separates, you're gonna have a lot of the joint with dried old 20 year old glue on it. If you just squeeze some more regular PVA or uh, wood glue in there, you're gonna wind up with a bond that's not really that great. It might work for a while, but it's probably not gonna be that great. So it's a good idea if you're gonna use regular wood glue to get that thing apart, clean up the joints, and then glue it all back together. I think you're gonna get your best results if you do that. Now, if you don't wanna do that, if you want to use a different adhesive for a more you know, permanent change, and also I wanna make sure that you, uh, the other key I forgot to mention is, are these joints closable? Sometimes a gap opens up, and no matter what you do, you can't close it because something just deformed so far. So if you are able to easily close those joints, then you, you have a better option for um, doing a repair while on the hinges, and that would be just to use epoxy. Um, again, getting all the dried glue out of there is great, but if you can't, or if we're taking the lazy route and you wanna keep it on the hinges, switch to epoxy, which should bind uh, fairly well in a situation of a broken wood working glue joint. epoxy is glue? Apparently you can do that. <laughs> Rumor has it, it is a glue sometimes. <laughs> So yeah, shove that epoxy in there, then clamp it together, and it's gonna hold just fine. It should be okay. So, But I do still think that the better repair is to get that thing off. It shouldn't take more than a day to do that. Um, get the whole thing glued back together, and by nighttime, hang that sucker back up. Uh, Apo Apina is in the chat. Yo. What grit stones uh, do you use for sharpening your hand planes? Depends on what state the blade, the iron, is in. If it's a brand new iron, usually, I mean, again, again, this is all it depends. Uh, where'd you get it from? You know, so if it's brand new, some companies will lap them. They'll be nice and flat on the back. Uh, all you have to really do is add like a secondary bevel to the bevel and you're good to go. Um, but generally, if I'm doing the whole thing, the stones I have on hand, I've got something that's a low grit, roughly in that 100. I usually use a diamond plate for that. Uh, then I jump up to 1,000, 5,000, 8,000. And Did you do a video on this? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure I have just search sharpening on the Wood Whisperer yeah. website. You'll Search find any videos good. I've yeah. done. And I've even been, blog posts, which... Those actually still exist. Those still exist. It's amazing. So yeah, I've kind of used the same system for a long time now. And that's about uh, the one, five, and eight is typically what I do. Anything I sharpen in my shop will get that same treatment. Um, as for a plain blade specifically, it's, not, it's just how I do it that's a little bit different mm -hmm. and what tools I use or what uh, holders I might use for it. But the grits are going to be the same. Uh, McCarthy Design wants to know, are you going to move your tool cabinet underneath the bench uh, to the new Robo or keep it in the hybrid workbench? What a great question for today. You know why? Because the workbenches are on sale. <laughs> well, because the workbench, no, <laughs> they are on sale. Because I just ruined Jason's day because he's getting the hybrid workbench yeah. 
I, uh, insult to injury, I said, can you help me move this cabinet out of the hybrid workbench to put into, into. the repo? And he said, oh, he man. He just gave me a look. <laughs> Looks could kill. Um, so yeah, I actually did just move that today. It was sized perfectly uh, to the Rubo initially and then moved to the hybrid. And when I designed the hybrid workbench, I was smart about it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to keep my uh, workbench cabinet. So I made sure the distance between the legs, even though the bench is significantly smaller, the distance between the legs is the same. So transferring it back would be no problem. But guess what? I didn't design the uh, leg vice chop. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like a coffin shape, if you could think of, of what that is. So that's the leg vice chop none of the left bank of drawers will open uh -oh. with that in place. Uh oh. So we put the cabinet in there oh. and we're both looking at it going, I had to make a new chop or modify, if I remember correctly. I had yeah. to modify my old chop to go around the cabinet doors in that workbench cabinet. And I didn't, I'm not, I don't want to make any changes. Mm -hmm. I just got this bench. So give, give it the, is what it give is. Give the cabinet back to Jason. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> so here's what I did. I turned it around. Oh, uh, well, uh, yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah, so that makes here's, sense. So here's the thing. I flipped it around. In our old shop, my workbench was pretty darn close to a wall. Right. So having tools on this side... Didn't make sense. Didn't make sense. Yeah. And I just wanted it to look cool, so I wanted the drawers facing front. Flipped it around. Yeah. And now the drawers are on the back side, but I have room on the back side. It is not difficult to go get chisels from that side or whatever's in those drawers. And I designed the cabinet to be useful on both sides. So there's a deep cavity, maybe about four inches if, if I'm... Correct? Yeah, I think it's about four inches. Mm -hmm. It's a little recess, and the back panel of that cabinet is three quarters of an inch. I did that intentionally so that I could attach things to that little alcove. So if I want my uh, most used chisels, I could put them there. If I just want some squares on display there, that's what's going to be viewable from what I guess would be called the front of the bench. So that's the plan. And if I come up with a, I was thinking about it, if I come up with some cool little add-ons or ways to um, really accessorize this new arrangement, I'm going to make another video and add that to the Guild series because it's something that I wasn't in a situation to think of it this way. Mm -hmm. And now that I am, I'm like, ah, light bulb just went off. I should have been doing this the whole time. Yeah. Or at least told people about it, but I didn't know. We sent out, uh, I sent out a newsletter this morning and he took a really cool picture of the two workbenches. So if you're not signed up for the newsletter and you want to hear from us. Go get it. Uh, I put a link in the chat and pinned it um, if you're not already signed yeah. up. If you are signed up and you're like, I didn't get any, a newsletter, check your spam. Mm -hmm. It's probably there. <laughs> so, spam will get us. Spam gets me every okay. time. Shoemaker or Schumacher woodworking. These are sort of off topic questions. How does Ava like Missouri? This The reason this happened, Ava was in the picture ah. that was posted to ask for questions. Yeah. Uh, Ava says she likes it. She, she loves her cousins. She loves her so cousins. So she likes being she able to hang out with her cousins. She loves her teacher. She's... She's, honestly, she's having the best time. She's having, yeah. Of all of us. I think she... <laughs> yes. maybe, maybe the dogs. The dogs might be the dogs, a close second. The, the, the situation for the dogs greatly improved. They got a major upgrade. Yeah. Um, do you like pork steaks yet? I liked pork steaks before yeah. I came I, here. In when fact... I introduced them to him in Colorado. And in fact, I made a TWW barbecue yep. video about making pork steaks for Nicole. <laughs> that was the, the one of the last videos. Videos I filmed before we left. Yeah, TWW. He asked barbecue. about toasted ravioli. Yeah, we've had that a couple different places. That is delicious. The Grotto Grill here in Flint Hill um, has yeah, a really nice, good. nice menu there. They, I'll tell you, it's them. not hard to find good fried food yeah. in this area. True. I mean, they they really know how to fry food. If you want to eat some fried food, uh, fried chicken. What I'm having trouble finding. It's just a nice salad, clean fillet of fish. <laughs> Can I find that on I a did, menu? I did get some salmon from the grocery store, and we'll have to do salmon one night. Good. <laughs> Is it a uh, wild caught or farm raised? I don't know. It's what just, color was it? It's, it's salmon. See what I have to deal with, you guys. Uh, Alex I just need a good piece of fish. Alex is going to be at our open house mm -hmm. uh, for the Firehouse Founders next week. Yeah. And he wants to know if we're selling any swag. Um, I, I think, think we're going to try. We're going to try. Uh, you will have a special gift uh, that I made for you too. That we don't. You don't um, know about yet, but I'm telling you. So yeah. it's a mystery. Ooh. We don't have a whole bunch of inventory here. No. It's just what my mom was able to bring from Colorado yeah. to here when she stays for extended visits. Uh, so we're going to try. Yeah. But we can't be sure what we're going to be able to do. We'll find out. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. <laughs> Once his mom gets in, we'll kind of take stock and inventory of what we have. Mm -hmm. Maybe set up a little space. I still, we still have to go through and clean this place up. How dare you? We set a goal of you guys visiting 
just so we would get this place cleaned up. <laughs> it worked though, because it's it's about as clean as it's gonna no, get. No, it's not. I just mean in terms of like, it's safe. Yeah, and yeah. And stuff is starting to look like a, Jesus a thing. Jesus sending me pictures of himself on my watch. I just did a story with him, oh. I wonder if he saw it. <laughs> look, he got the flag behind him and everything. Oh, America. oh Tim JB, hey Tim. Oh, I, and that's not nice. After hearing, I'm sorry. That wasn't a good thing to hear. Hope you. Oh. Hope you. Uh, oh, Tim. Did you think it was giving you good news there? I well, I saw that he was. It's definitely nice to have the Friday Live surprise after hearing him. You may. Let's, let's think hope positive. That you, let's think positive. You do not lose your yes. job. Yes. Um. Oh, Tree of Life was working. Has a three three week old baby. And oh, nice. still managed to get shop time. What helped you get shop time consistently? Consistently, if anything, when having a newborn. Me. <laughs> it, I mean, two different, two different babies, yeah. two different situations. Yeah. The experience with the first one was so difficult, and we basically were in survival mode. Yeah. It wasn't a matter of, can I get time to work? It was like, who's going to be able to sleep tonight? Mm -hmm. And we would trade off, and it was very, very difficult. With the second baby, part of the condition of having a second child was an agreement. <laughs> I was like, fine, I'll, ta I'll, I'll move a bed into yeah, the room. It was an like agreement. I had a whole plan. I said, Nicole, I can't do that again. I yeah. cannot, I will not survive. <laughs> I cannot do it again. I need to work and I need to get sleep so I could work safely. Yeah. I will go with less sleep to help out, but I have to get sleep each night. Um, so we did have an, a different arrangement mm -hmm. for the second child. Um, I mean, the thing is, um, I think it really depends if, if, I don't know. Your support system is, is huge. Tree of Blood, that's a, yeah. a, a Nathan, Nathan, Nathan yes. right? So Nathan, I don't know if you do woodworking as a primary um, you know, career Business. thing, or if you have a, uh, another regular job. Um, I think when it comes to people who have regular jobs, especially with a newborn, forget about woodworking for a while. I don't think, you know, especially for the newborn period, the first couple of months, Take a break. I mean, maybe go in there, walk around, and wax the table saw to make yourself feel better when you got five minutes between bottles. <laughs> uh, but that's a time to just focus on supporting uh, your wife and being there for the little one. After it's that called point, the baby ca baby cave for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> After that point, then we could start working in time. You know, during naps, things like that. You can get a little bit more aggressive. Oh. You got a big delivery. I don't know. Uh, you get a little bit more aggressive about getting some of that time back. <gasps> Holy, Holy crap. crap! That's what I don't like. Scary. There's a, it's not quite a semi, is it? It's a big like delivery truck. Um, I think it has like a lift gate, but a big one. Just hauled ass through the parking lot. I thought he was gonna run right into, past this I door. I thought he was gonna run into the door. That's see, I don't mind being a good neighbor. Should I go out there and yell at him? But when there's I'm a safety, when there's a safety thing uh, at play with somebody just doing that in our parking lot, I don't appreciate that. That scared me. I'll tell you what you do. You go take a break. Hey. I'll answer questions. Go tell Jason and let him yell Well, Jason's out there. I don't know he's why. He's got his headphones on. Oh. All right, let me do Can this. Can I go, go yell? Seriously, I want Jason to give him hell. Okay, I'll be right back. Jason isn't scared. All right. He'll go get him. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm serious. That, that was incredibly rude. Um, let's see. McCain? I see... Here we go. And to broadcast. I see you have a ton of jet parallel clamps. I have an opportunity to buy 10 24 inch jet parallel clamps for 300 bucks. It's a great deal. Clamps worth it? Only have used the Bessie ones. Uh, yeah, I think, I actually think jet is better than Bessie. Now Bessie has come up with a few different versions over time. And I, maybe I'm not that familiar with the latest version, but jet has always had a big advantage over uh, the Bessie and they have this like, stop clutch system, I guess you would call it, so that this thing just isn't dropping on you. That's one of the things that drove me nuts about Bessie's is you couldn't hold them in a position, they would just fall. So you gotta kinda lift the handle, move it, and then if you don't push the handle back in, in the correct position, that head just drops. So maybe they've improved that in more recent versions, but Jet has always had the better design. Now that said, one of the funny things about Jet's design they haven't touched it since they invented it. I, I think maybe oh. they probably made them a little bit cheaper to get their costs down, uh, but they have not made any innovations in there. A company like Bessie is actually continually trying to innovate and they're making changes. They're changing the handle material, the handle shape, um, just adding different things to it. So I actually, as a clamp company, 
I've got more respect for Bessie because I love innovation and I love companies that try to improve things over time. But this jet model is exactly the same as it was 10 plus years ago. Um, but that said, they made the better clamp to begin with and it was working, so why mess with it, right? That was kind of the logic. So um, do not sleep on a good deal if it's uh, a, a good deal on parallel clamps, whether it's Jesse, Jesse. Jesse. <laughs> Just made a new clamp company. Nice, Jesse. <laughs> Jesse clamps. Whether it's Bessie or Jet, it's going to be fine. You're going to be mm. happy with those clamps. We're just when we talk about the differences, we are talking about nitpicky things. Mm -hmm. uh, got a question here from Jason Spenny. Hey, Jason. In your experience, does dried epoxy pop off, off finish the way dried PVA glue does? Does the answer change if the finish is poly wax or um, boiled linseed oil? Well, I'm pretty careful about what I get epoxy on. So this isn't something I've had as much opportunity to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. I do not know if epoxy is more likely to pop off of one of those finishes than another. I know that any finish that has a little bit of wax in that top coat is gonna be a little more likely to have any glue, whatever it is, pop off. So I don't know for sure with that arrangement of, of glues you have there, but um, yeah, I mean, wood glue generally all those finishes, if it's a good quality finish, um, the glue will pop off epoxy. We use epoxy to grip to things that don't normally grip otherwise, whether it's oily species, um, dissimilar materials, metal, plastics, and wood going together. Um, so I do think you're probably gonna have more of a problem getting epoxy off of all those finishes than uh, you would with just regular wood glue. But I don't have personal experience with it, I can't say for sure. Uh, James just had a comment. Hello from Montana. I watch your videos all the time. The only problem is there's not enough. That is a problem. <laughs> Thanks for what you did. I, I agree with you. There's like almost 800 videos on our YouTube channel alone. Not enough. And then you have the guild. Not enough. <laughs> I'm just wondering. When is it enough? Is it tw how are we on your TV all the time? Because that's a lot of video. That I mean, takes... if, if you add up, I would love how to many know years. What is the elapsed time, time of, in minutes of all of our content? If you watch all Wood Whisperer content, should we add in Wood Talk, the podcast too? Oh yeah, you have Wood Talk. Well, that's audio. That's yeah, not, video. not video. I guess it doesn't. But count. I'm because the last time I checked, it was like 750 some odd videos on our YouTube channel alone. Yeah. What about if we just count the good ones? <laughs> Maybe that's what he means. I only watch the good ones. <laughs> because then it might be a smaller number. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I got a, I have a super chat here that I'm looking for. There it is from Fernatology. Hey, Fernatology. What's up? Uh, my first TWW live. Oh, Glad I could finally make the timing work. Great stuff. Thanks, Mark and Nicole. Okay, I'm going to tell you something about Fernatology. Um, I've been in contact with him. He is actually, some of you who've been around for a long time watching us weirdos make video uh, Some of you online. might think on Fernatology. Uh, you might remember Neil Layman's. Mm-hmm and forgive me if I'm not pronouncing his last name correctly. Um, he was one of the earliest people with me, Tommy Mack, even Charles Neal in that time mm -hmm. frame of the earliest pioneers of people making instructional woodworking content online and distributing via RSS. We're talking 2006, 2007, maybe 2008. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, Neil passed away quite a while ago at this point. Um, I believe that is his nephew. Yes, it is. Okay, so he started, okay, we all know how much social media sucks, right? Facebook, Instagram, they may have been good at a period, you know, at a time, but once money gets mixed in and big corporations are making decisions, platforms tend to go downhill. And especially in recent years, Instagram, everybody chasing TikTok, things have gone even further downhill. So I'm gonna give him a big plug here. Yeah, if I just you, linked to his uh, site in yeah, the chat. If you are kind of sick of that and you wanna try something better, something that's a little bit more pure, something that is just simply there to let you share what you've made and learn from other woodworkers who are just sharing what they made. And you're getting in kind of early. It's early, it is early. These things are always difficult to get off the ground. So I, but it's I, I always really- better when it first starts too. Same way with like Twitter. Yeah. Oh, I remember the days. The early days, early of, days Twitter. of Twitter. <laughs> It was so fun. It was yeah. so fun. <laughs> but this is not a big corporation. No. This is just a uh, individual dude making it happen. And it is, I've been in there. It's a great app. I don't have enough bandwidth to be in that app all the time. That's kind of a challenge as a, a content producer. Mm -hmm. But it's called Fernatology. You can find it at fernatology.com. And it is a great, simple, clean app that's, uh, as far as I know, ad-free. But I know he has some stuff in there that's other resources you might be interested in. Um, 
I, I really yeah. think it's worthwhile. I would love to see something like that succeed and sure. become a real contender amongst the you know bigger social media names. Um, so go check that out, furnitology.com. Got a nice super chat from Judy. Hi, Judy. Judy, Judy. Uh, speaking of visiting, when is the open house? I thought you mentioned something about invites last week, but I am old and I don't remember. <laughs> Judy, uh, you should have got an email. <laughs> If, yeah, if you emails didn't, went out a while ago. Uh, I will send you another one. Um, we're, I had to put caps on each of the days because we only have so many parking spots. So I'm using a tool to manage invites. So you basically look at what slots are available and you pick that slot. So we're um, starting on uh, Saturday the tw is, is it the 22nd? Okay, yeah, no, no. Saturday the 22nd, the 23rd, the 24th, so Saturday, Sunday, Monday, mm -hmm. and then again the following Saturday. Um, we may open up, because we do have a lot of people just kind of stop by when Mark's working, and it's going to be getting into winter months, and the doors are going to be closed, and he's not going to know people are standing outside knocking on the door. So I'm trying to figure out a way for, for people to come by and see the shop um, and talk for a little bit. Um, it's still a working shop, so balancing, you know, when would be the best days and times to do that is, because we're not really here on the weekends. We're at home. So, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll shoot you an email with that, that information. There are still some slots available. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Oh, Ray. Any status on the firehouse swag for the folks that can't make it to Missouri next week? Um, I have my, I have the order in for the hats. Mm -hmm. They haven't been made or they're being made at the moment. I'm hoping to have them for It's been them. quite a process. It was a process. Because I've been picky about the hat itself. It's, yeah. it's tricky to get like a good quality hat. Like so. I, didn't, I just didn't want just a hat with a, a logo on it. Sure. I wanted a comfortable, good looking hat. So yeah. it, it took some time to get to a product that but I got all this. Like, I have the stickers. Yeah. So once I get the hats, that's when I send everything out. And I've been waiting for Lorna to get back his mom into town so she, we can just sit down and send it out. Because mm -hmm. it's like... 900 envelopes that need to go out. Yeah. All right, we're going to need to go soon. So All right, pick up any I'm making sure. Pressing questions. I, I know. Live show antics. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bite their ankle? The <laughs> beagle? You should no, have seen I him. went out there and I, Jason's just sitting there sanding away. I told you he wouldn't know. He's got his but headphones he, on. But he's facing that way. How would you not see that guy? He's, he's working hard. Yeah, he's head down. Okay. Get it done. <laughs> See, Jason isn't afraid of anybody. Jason would have gone over there and made that guy cry. <laughs> yeah. If he would have gotten to I him. would have been like, what are you doing? <laughs> All right. Let's see. Making sure I'm not... Mi oh, there was another super chat from Aaron. Ian? Ian, Ian sorry. Ian, do, we, do we ever figure out this, how to pronounce no, this? No, I think it is It Ian. is Ian? Yeah, crisp. I remember this from a very long time ago. It spells it a little different. I was going to put in 10, but then you mentioned commercialism. Commercialization <laughs> on, on the web. web. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is different. <laughs> this is a oh, different kind of thing. Alan wants to see your Kent Rollins happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> Kent Rollins has an amazing YouTube channel. Oh, he's great. Uh, we He watches Kent Rollins in the morning all the time. The kids, so the kids love at, it. Because I have the uh, coffee episode yeah. that he did. You're looking for a perfect co coffee. And I play it every morning. And, <laughs> and both of my Eva kids will go and find it and play, and play it. it just to start the coffee. It's great. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like I'm missing something. We're missing a lot, but, you know. Oh, Owen. Oh, Owen. Owen. Not Ian. I'm sorry, Owen. Owen. What a cool way to spell it, though. Yeah. I mean, props to your parents. Uh, let's see. Bobby. Bob C. Bobby C. Nicole, props to you. You're a pro handling the tire issue and the laptop issue and still smiling with Mark mocking you. That's the thanks you get. <laughs> Running home to get a laptop, worrying about a, you got to pick up the kids from school, yeah, so we got to yeah, get a tire repaired, yeah, yeah. and your husband's making fun of the way you pronounce words. He's eating words. soup. He's eating soup. Uh, not just soup, Nicole. It was a lobster bisque. Was it, was it good? I said it looked like Pepto, but tastes Pepto, but tastes <laughs> like a dream. It was actually really good. Uh, Don Cheadle. Don please. Cheadle. Okay. Don Cheadle. John Cheadle. Mm. Don Cheadle. I accidentally called him Don Cheeto one time. It's never gone away. <laughs> uh, Don Sargood wants to know any new guild projects coming out. Yeah. Yes. So we got a Danish cord bench coming out with Caleb James. Uh, that's going to be filmed. Oof. When is it, Todd? Next week? The week after? Some, I, this I month. I thought it was this week. Um, 
I'll, I guess I'll let this drop because it's, it's kind of agreed to. We have it on the calendar. Uh, early in the first quarter, we're going to be filming twice in one visit mm -hmm. with uh, Megan Fitzpatrick mm -hmm. and that other guy that uh, works in the same shop as her. You know who he is, right? Usually in the background of yeah. her shot shots. They, they just let anybody in. <laughs> uh, Chris Schwartz yes. is going to be doing, hopefully, a chair uh, for the Guild. Um, we also have Philip Morley coming back again. What about me? Hold on, wait a second, we'll get to you. We got <laughs> Philip Morley coming back for another project. We also have Mike Farrington mm -hmm. and Brian Benham. If we can get another two for going on that trip, because yep. they're both in Denver, we'll Denver. In the Denver area, that would be fantastic. Uh, and then we have to still formalize it. We got to get all the details down. Um, Nicole and I might co-produce a 3D printing for woodworkers course mm -hmm. that would essentially talk about the gear, talk about why you might be interested <laughs> yeah. in it. If you're already into 3D printing, this is not the class for you. No, this would be. This is like you're scared of it. Scared of it. By not it. sure where to even start with it. Yeah. I'm going to walk you through that process. And then we'll show some of the tools and software that we use and some of the things that I've made for the shop, uh, things related to the shop, just to kind of get your feet wet, mm -hmm. get you in the door. Um, very niche. Oh, you That's did an alarm. alarm. I did, I told you I was <laughs> gonna be very tight on the time. Matthew says, oh, holy crap, so much on deck. Yeah, so there. this is gonna be a good year. Todd is gonna be traveling a lot. Yep. Uh, I'm going to try to make it to some of these places too. I want to go to Ohio and mm -hmm. hang out with uh, I think the, we Megan can and make Chris. it a family trip because your cousins are there yeah, too. Yeah, I got I some cousins we... there, so that'll, that'll be a good trip. So yeah, there's a whole lot on deck. Now, what am I building for the guild? I don't know. I don't know. Guys, I'm making stupid tools. I'm making beam compasses that are totally overbuilt. You, uh, That's you what do I'm need doing. to make me a table. Yeah, I'm going to make a big dining table. Big I got some table. ideas for that. I need, I need a lot of things. I need mm -hmm. a new filing cabinet. What? I need Why for those little cabinet? for those totes. Oh, that but I have. not not actually a filing no, cabinet. I guess though. you could make it into a filing cabinet, but it's, it's like a cubby thing. It's like a file all my stuff cabinet. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, previously, Matthew said uh, I asked. This has to be the last question. Okay, last question. Asked about the trestle table based on Mark's plans. Another question. It's almost solid walnut. So I was planning on two coats of Rubio for the table. Does the base need two coats as well? It doesn't need it, but do you want it? Because it looks different when you put two coats on. Uh, two coats of Rubio looks finished, or if you go Rubio and then you use their universal maintenance oil as a second coat, um, it ups the sheen a little bit. If you only do a single coat, it stays very matte. So yes, I personally think you wanna put two coats on the base because then you, otherwise you have a little bit of a mismatch. Also, if you are cleaning this thing, um, two coats just tends to let the dust go off of it a little bit better. Um, you guys know how it is when you put like, let's say one coat of boiled linseed oil on a coat, uh, you coat a piece of wood, raw wood with that. A single coat darkens the wood, looks like it's got finish on it for a little while, but then it dries to 100% uh, matte finish. And it's now still in that state where if you've got something like, I don't know, let's just say baby powder, something of that consistency, something dusty, it still just sits down in the pores and wipes onto the surface and just looks dirty. You kind of need that second coat, uh, I find, with Rubio to get it to the point that the dust just kind of cleanly wipes off. Um, otherwise, you just it's, I find it hard to clean. So that does include the base. If you're cleaning the entire table at some point, you're going to be thankful with that, uh, that you did that second coat. So I would, I would definitely recommend to you. Uh, just Raphael wants to know, dining table, what happened to the gaming table? We still have it. I just want a different table. We're kind of tired I'm of a, it. I'm fickle. We're honestly, we're just, we're tired of it. And I think when you're in a position where you could just build yeah. another thing. I'm jealous of the table he built for Jason. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, can I have that one? We don't, uh, honestly. Can we swap? I think I've gotten you on board with my logic here. Yeah. We don't really marry our furniture, yeah. right? Yeah. And when you want to keep building new things, it's, that's kind of one of the advantages. So you could pass something down or find like maybe in the basement, mm -hmm. you could put the gaming dining table down there. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, we just don't use the gaming feature of it mm -hmm. as much as we had envisioned. And maybe as the kids get older, we'll use it more. Maybe. Maybe we put it down in the... But that's what I'm saying. Let's keep yeah. it downstairs. We'll keep it downstairs. Because we got like a playroom area downstairs. And we do be... puzzles. I think it would be a great puzzle table. It like... has been good for puzzles and yeah. Lego yeah. when there's like a Lego kit right. being put together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after that's done, then we don't use the feature anymore. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to say thank you, Richard, for becoming a uh, YouTube member. Um, since you're a YouTube member now, you can hang out with us in the after show. If you go yes. to the YouTube, our YouTube page and under the community tab, there is a link to our after show. 
Um, if you are on Patreon, uh, I was going to get the link for you, but that's where it is on Patreon in the in the feed there too. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to, as he's talking, I'll try to grab that. What are you doing? You ever have that thing where normally you're standing up and you feel it's just like a tinge of sinus something, and then you put your head down and you go, oh, there it is. No, I don't. Chat room, back me <laughs> up, right? For people who suffer from sinus things, isn't that a thing? Because okay. I was just testing it. Okay. I was just testing it to see, see if it would hurt. See, when I do that, I, I get dizzy. I would get dizzy and oh, really? fall down. No, yeah. for me, like if, I, if I'm if i coming down with a sinus thing, mm. and like, I don't know, I'm sanding under something like this, I'll get that. As soon as I go off of vertical, I feel something like right up yeah. in my sinuses. Yep. It's, it's, like it's I, the I, corn. They're harvesting the corn. Is that what it is? They're I did flow the, this morning, too. Harvesting the corn and the beans and all the stuff, and it's all in the air. So. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and uh, wrap this show up. Uh, we will see you over at the after show for some more casual. Mm -hmm. Marion says, it's a thing. It's a thing. Word. Thanks. Adam says, sometimes it leaks. I hope leaks. he's talking about sinuses. <laughs> I don't know. Could have been talking about something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, hey guys. Hey, come uh, to the after show and we'll talk more about yeah, sciences. Yeah, let's talk. We talk about all kinds of off topic stuff, <laughs> including health and sciences. Sciences, right. not sciences. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, thanks everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.